troubling trend is brewing in the bond market. Junk loan defaults are starting to climb, and this could be an early warning sign for serious challenges ahead for the economy. Frank Osino is in the space managing a leveraged loan fund. He is a bank loan sector lead at New Fleet Asset Management. Frank, great to have you with us. Hi, Melissa. Thank you. So uh, things are starting to get worse, but can you put it into context for us? How bad is it so far? Yeah, sure. We're in the last few weeks, even last couple of months, we started to see uh, downgrades pick up. Uh, we've had four straight months of uh, more downgrades than upgrades. Uh, we've seen five defaults in the last five weeks. Uh, many of them uh, anticipated Cineworld just yesterday. Uh, and another data point that we like to track here at New Fleet is loans that are trading below 80 cents on the dollar. And we're seeing that pick up as well. Uh, having said that, uh, when we put all of that data in context, uh, it's still very early to, uh, you know, directionally, though, that data is perhaps concerning. But uh, when we look at history, it's still very light. Uh, defaults at less than 1% today uh, is well below the historic average of 3.5%. Uh, defaults were 6% back in the 2000, 2002, you know, the last traditional recession in my mind. Uh, loans trading below 80 are 3 percent of the market. Uh, that's up from 1 percent to start the year. Mm -hmm. uh, but there have been periods where we've seen 10 percent of the market, you know, uh, trading below 80. Right. The, US, the U.S. downgrade, oil, and, and downgrades to upgrades as well. We've seen periods where the ratio has been 5 to 1. Right. Um, so defaults to rise, that's a foregone conclusion in your eye. It's going to hit dot-com bubble levels. And I'm wondering which sectors are going to feel it the most this time around. Uh, this time around, it looks to me like there's going to be uh, defaults or stress. Uh, the dispersion is going to be wide. Uh, every industry has a credit or two uh, that has a story. Uh, so I don't see uh, housing driving it or tech driving it or the cyclicals driving it. I think there's a name or two uh, everywhere that, 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 that may come under stress. Uh, and the reason for that is that over the last few years, you know, the LBO market, the leveraged finance market has grown, uh, and there are borrowers across industries that may have low interest coverage or debt burdens that uh, they might not be able to sustain. And it, it wasn't driven by any one industry. Frank, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. Um, so we haven't seen defaults really move a lot yet, but how would you, how do you think about the setup? Are companies in better shape, worse shape, or the same as prior cycles where, where defaults really picked up? No, I, I think borrowers have done a great job post-COVID of taking cost out, uh, raising prices, managing margins. Balance sheets are in very good shape. Uh, there isn't a lot of debt due in the next couple of years. That, that The refinancing wave happened and pushed out runway. So I would say, by and large, borrowers in good shape. But there are borrowers at the margin uh, that will be impacted. You know, when, when capital markets dries up for, uh, you know, a Cine world, like I said, like yesterday, uh, then, then you file for bankruptcy. So I think borrowers, by and large, are in good shape. I would also add that not all defaults are created equal. Right. There are uh, situations where you might have, you know, an all first lien structure or a bad business with a bad capital structure. Uh, those might be low recovery type situations. But I think mm -hmm. about, you know, a borrower like Carnival, eight billion of first lien loans, first lien debt with twenty five billion dollars of book value collateral. You know, the IP, the customer list, the ships. 25 billion of book value collateral against an $8 billion first lien loan, that could be a good outcome, right? That could be a high recovery. And so it's my job and the job of the analyst team to, to ferret those out and find those. Frank, thanks for joining us. Thank Frank Casino of New Fleet Asset Management. Um, Tim, we often talk about on the show about HYG and what this indicates and watching this and seeing a spike higher and that's concerning, et cetera, et cetera. Have you been watching this? Yeah, I, I think the HYG, but looking at high-yield spreads, if folks at home can do this by just almost Googling OAS, H-Y-O-A-S, it'll bring up essentially the Bank of America high-yield spread. And you can see that it, on July 5th, we were up at 6%. Uh, we got we were, you know, we got back down to 4 and a quarter. we are back near 5%. What does it mean in the context of history? Well, first of all, 
junk bonds owe a great deal of gratitude to the Fed. And so every time the Fed goes out there and says, hey, you know, higher for longer, um, that there's a lot of institutions that reached out the risk curve. This is what the Fed did. And, and at 6%, if I can get a 352 year, um, think about what people were buying in the junk bond market out at, you know, 5% just six to nine months ago, or certainly 12 to 18 months ago. So that's the biggest impact here. I, I think where liquidity is light, you're going to also see uh, buyers strike on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Getting new issues done is one of the biggest problems here in the junk market. I mean, I mean that's same goes for EM debt. Yep. It pushed out a lot of institutional investors oh. to buy EM debt. And now with the rising dollar, spiking dollar, that's going to come. You were seeing 50, 50 year issues in Mexico, at, you know, at three and a half percent. I mean, so absolutely. And I think a lot of the concern here, right, is that we're in a high rate environment. So this is going to put a lot of stress on those companies who aren't going to be able to pay back those loans. But there is the idea here that if rates are peaking, right, if we do see them come down, many of these institutions are still on average like three years away from any of these loan payments mm -hmm. coming due. This might not be as much of a concern if we start to see rates turn over. So I think that's the big thing you have to watch. It's probably too early to see this as a warning sign.